This is a short video for those intending to visit the Loch Lomond National Park and who may wish to see Loch Lomond from a different but outstanding viewpoint. Duncrine, or the Dumplings it's known locally, is situated in the small village of Gatterharn, which means the farm of the rock. The small hill itself is an extinct volcanic plug and is open to the considerate tourist. The climb starts approximately 750 metres up from Duncrine Road, which is adjacent to the old Gatterharn Hotel or the House of Darach as it's now known. Note the guidelines and restrictions in force for this route. There are four small stages in the climb, which takes the walker to a little over 120 metres above the sea level. The first ascent is a gentle slope via native woodlands. At the end of the first climb, the view opens out onto pastures via two gates. Follow the path up, which is sandwiched between grazing on your right and wild meadows on your left. Looking left, you may occasionally see the odd pheasant or deer lurking in the field. But a small warning for those planning to visit in winter or after heavy rain, this part of the path can be very muddy, so wear appropriate footwear and be prepared to get dirty. At the end of the path you can turn around and look back to where you came from and see the road behind the tree line in the distance. At the end of the path there is yet another gate and again there is a warning sign advising you of the do's and don'ts when using these country paths. Going through the gate you will turn right and enter the second wooded area. This path is shorter than before but slightly steeper. While you're climbing, don't forget to look to your right and back to see open farmland as it spreads out before you. Exiting the woodland, you are now approaching the steepest part of the climb, but it's only a short way and you have the excuse of stopping to take in the view behind you, even if it is actually only for a short rest. The high steep slope to your right starts to diminish and this can be replaced with low lying ferns as you approach the top of the hill. Again, it's worthwhile taking a view backwards, looking over the plains in front of you where the farmland spreads out as far as the eye can see. We're getting near the top now. The first thing you'll see is a geographical trig point, now redundant with the introduction of modern global positioning satellites, and then slowly the distant hilltops will appear, and then the whole of the southern end of Loch Lomond will appear at your feet, with as many islands dotted in the watery landscape. Scanning the hills in front of you, you can see the start of the Highland Boundary Fault Line, which separates the central belt of Scotland from the Highlands of Scotland. It can be seen over to your right at Balmaha with the two large islands of Ishkailach and Inchmurran forming part of the ridge of the fault line. You're now looking at Ben Lomond in the distance, with Inchkailach below that is the large island. Further in the distance you can see the mountain tops of the first of the Monroes, those mountains above 3,000 feet in height. Well, if you look closely, just slightly to the left, you can see the notched peak of Ben Arthur or the Copper, which, while not a Monroe, as it's just short of the 3,000 feet limit, is actually a Corbett or a mount between 2,500 and 3,000 feet, and another worthwhile walk if one has the time to visit Annika. I hope you enjoyed this short visual, and watch out for more from around Loch Lomond.